praise God and let the people of God say Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program that we do here every week from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization where we exhort, we edify, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to repentance through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about God's investment, and the topic says, you are God's investment. Who you? You are God's investment if you are a child of God, if you are a believer. And if you are not yet a believer, listen, don't walk away because God has invested some things into you as well. Like the, the air in your nostrils, that you can see me, you can think right. Those are God's investment in you. So by the time we finish, you will know how to become a child of God so God can unleash the plans that he has for you, all right? So before we go into the lesson, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Oh Lord, I release myself unto you. I ask Holy Spirit that you take these lips of clay and use them for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let your word come out with power from these lips. Let it come out clearly for people to understand and let the word do its work in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, our case study is Simon Peter, my big brother. Uh, if you have been watching me by now, you, you know how much I love that brother, Simon Peter. He gives me a lot of hope. Uh, and the foundation text is uh, the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 22, verse 31, we stop at 32. Gospel according to St. Luke, 22, 31 to 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, hallelujah, that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now, let's first start our lesson by saying God is a father to those who have given their lives to Jesus. He is not the father of pagans. He's not. He's their creator, but he's not their father. But a pagan can become a child of God, an unbeliever, an agnostic, an atheist, can become a child of God if they give their lives to Jesus. And then God will now become their father and we will become brothers and sisters. So this topic is between God, the father, and we, his children, who have given our lives to his son, Jesus Christ. Now, God is first a father to us, his children, and then is an inve investor, and then a businessman, in that order. God blesses his children as any responsible fathers provides for his children. However, he expects the blessings to be used positively to affect other lives around us and for the blessing to multiply that is how that is the only way you can get your blessings to multiply that's the kingdom principle in the kingdom of god if you want the blessings of god to multiply in your life 
then put it to work. If you sit on it, it's not going to happen. So, you as God's investment, I as God's investment, what is God expecting from us? Number one, you are expected to have reruns. God is not a user. Oh, no. He does not use and dump. That is why God is not happy with half-hearted or fair-weather, thrill-seeking believers. He's not happy with them. Why? Because investing in such people, we mostly like, we mostly end up in disappointment as they will either quit because of challenges or wander off because they are fascinated with other things. You see, when somebody is fickle, uh-uh, it's, it, it's, not, it's not really a good thing. God wants to use his children over and over again. This is why he takes his time in preparing and equipping us before launching us out on the spiritual investment market. Um, a, a, a sister, she's a sister and she's also like a mentor. She was sharing a testimony a few years back and she told me that where she works now, that if she had seen the, um, the job in the paper, in the advert or something, that there is no way she would have applied for that job because she, she didn't have the skills, she didn't have the years of experience. I mean, it's a big job. But somehow, miraculously, she just, she went for another job uh, interview and they just said, would you like to interview for this position? And she's like, okay, since I'm here, and today she's doing well on that job. That was God giving that provision for that sister to use her in that company. Because as the year rolled by, God gave her the opportunity to mingle with the, with the uh, top level officials in that company. And she's able to impact them with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you see. But that's not the only where, uh, the only place where God is using this sister. God is using her in a church, in a neighborhood, you see. God uses his children over and over again. Look at Peter, Simon Peter. He was taken from being a fisherman to becoming a fisher of men, you see. God changed Peter and used him to preach the gospel on the day of Pentecost. And over 3,000 people were saved, you see. And God used Peter again to heal a lame person. He raised the dead in the name of Jesus. He became the leader of the first century church and the Jerusalem church council. I mean, he went on to write two epistles in the New Testament and eventually he died for the cause of Jesus Christ. So God uses his children over and over again. Let's go to the uh, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verse 2, Luke 10, 2. Then he said to them, this is Jesus speaking now, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You see, there are so many souls to be touched, so many lives who are yet to hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why God uses his children over and over again, because there are so many people to be preached to and be impacted for the kingdom of God. To go on for God is to go on for long. To go on for God is to go on for long. Moving on. You are expected to bring fortunes. God expects his children to be consistently fruitful. Now, watch this. A fruitless believer is like a useless investment for God. Now, I didn't say it's a useless investment. It's life. It's a simile, okay? So, 
God's children are not reservoirs of his blessings. Oh no, we are not supposed to be. We are rivers of his blessing which carry the nutrients in them to other places to fertilize those areas, you see. After the Lord restored Simon Peter, Peter left a trail of touched lives in every city or house that he went. He went to Cornelius' uh, uh, house, and by the time he left the old household of Cornelius, they became Christians. He went to Tabitha's house. He raised Tabitha from the dead. He went to the city of Samaria, and he baptized the new converts there. He met Simon the sorcerer, and through the Holy Spirit in Simon Peter, he exposed Simon the sorcerer for the phony that he was, you see. So everywhere he went, he was bringing increase to the kingdom of God. People's lives were being changed. People were turning to, to Christianity. People were being converted to Jesus Christ. Jesus expects you and I to be the same everywhere we are, everywhere we go, on your job. God didn't just give you that job so you could make money and buy big cars and big houses. No, God put you there so you can rub shoulders with your uh, colleagues and let them know about Jesus. Are you into business? God is not giving you those uh, good business opportunities just for the money. No, it's for you to meet other business people and let them know about your Jesus. Are you a student? What an opportunity. About three days ago, or uh, last week, in the United States, it was, your, it was uh, Bring Your Bible Day uh, to school, October 5th, I believe. What an opportunity as a student to take your Bible to school and instead of talking uh, when you have nothing to do, let your friends see you reading the Bible. Then we ask you, you see, everywhere we go, we ought to leave a trail of changed lives because we are expected to bring fortunes. Let's go to the gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verse 16, John 15, 16. Here is Jesus speaking now. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain. You see, your money can't remain, oh no. Your clothes can remain, your house, your cars, all those are consumables, okay? But when, you, when God uses you to change somebody's life, I'm telling you, for all eternity, it's going to remain. So Jesus said, so that your fruit will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. There you have it, the kingdom principle. You want your prayers answered, huh? Are you asking in connection to changing other people's lives? That is how Jesus promised that your prayers will be answered. If you are asking God to give you another car, if you are asking God to give you a better paying job, when you have not done anything for the kingdom of God on your current job, don't be surprised if heaven is silent, then don't say, oh God, you didn't listen to my prayer. Of course, he listened to your prayer, but wh why, why is he going to give you another job? If the current job you have, if you're not doing anything for God on it, why does he, why, why does he need to give you another one? It's not going to happen. You want your prayer answered. Whatever you are asking God to do for you, make sure it's connected to changing people's lives with the gospel. All right? To be true to God's call, is to be true to God's love. Let's say that again, because it's so beautiful. To be true to God's call is to be true to God's love. Don't just think, oh, I, I love Jesus. Oh, no. You love Jesus, then rise up to the call and begin to preach to people. Let's take people out of the mouth of Satan that is taking them to hell. If you love God, you will love who he loves. He loves souls. So you need to love what God loves. Amen. Now, 
The third thing that God expects us to do as his investment, he expects us to have losses. Say what? Oh yeah. God is a realist. You surprised? Oh yeah. He, know, he knows that not all the time you'll be making gains. So he expects you, you and I will make some losses too, you see. God is fully aware of our condition as imperfect people living in an imperfect world. That is why the body of Christ, ecclesia in Greek, translates to the called out. We are called out to live in holiness in an unholy world. Do I need to say anymore that the world is not holy, huh? God will not throw us overboard when we stumble. Please listen to me carefully because there are so many doctrines out there about this very area that is so depressing and that is not what Jesus said. Jesus never said, if you believe in me, and then you make a mistake, you will have to be born again, and then I will have to take you back again. Jesus never said that. No. When we make mistakes, when we sin, God does not throw us overboard. No. Neither does he love us less than before. However, we are expected to confess immediately and not cooperate with the devil by covering up our sin. Why? Because if you don't confess immediately and ask for forgiveness, there won't be fellowship between you and God, and the devil will be molesting you. The devil is the greatest molester the world has ever seen. Peter committed the worst spiritual crime. He denied Christ. I mean, that's the worst thing you can do to Christ, to deny him. Christ, watch this, restored Peter and went on to use him greatly. Why? Because Peter, after he realized what he did, he wept bitterly and repented. When Jesus rose from the dead, and he spoke to Mary Magdalene. He said, go tell my disciples and Peter. You see, he mentioned Peter by name. To let Peter know, mm -mm -mm, I have nothing against you. You have repented. We're good. Where have you fallen? Huh? Where have you fallen? Pornography? Fornication? Lying? Cheating? Gossiping? Whatever it is. And the devil is telling you, God cannot take you back again. God cannot forgive you. The devil is a liar. Alright? Go back to God. When you sin, do not run away from God. Run to Jesus. Okay? Run to Jesus. Because that is where your deliverance is. Confess. And repent. To repent means... You turn from that path. You change the course. All right? And make yourself accountable to uh, godly people, godly counselors and mentors to help you. People who can give you practical advice, maybe where to avoid, what not to do, so you don't go into that thing again. Amen? Let's go to First John chapter 2, verse 1. This is one of the verses in the Bible that gives me so much comfort. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, listen up now, believer. These things I write to you so that you may not sin. You see, if you're a believer and the Holy Spirit is in you, before you fall into any temptation, the Holy Spirit will alert you. Now, it will take your conscious disobedience to fall into that temptation. But even if that happens, God forbid, and if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see? The whole point is, when you sing, when you goof, do not run away from Jesus. Run to Jesus. Run to the light. Our Father has a broad shoulder on which you can slump over. Joseph and Zion, say that again. They need to hear it. Our Father has a broad shoulder on which we can slump over. He is able to carry us. He is able. Amen. Now, the next thing that the Lord is expecting you to, to do as his investment is he expected, he, you are expected to have rebounds. God has equipped his children to be able to bounce back. Oh yeah. When you got saved and the Holy Spirit came inside of you, that is the, he is the spring in your steps. Oh yeah. Failure to do that will be a direct disobedience to the order of the King of Heaven whom we serve. To keep flogging ourselves over past mistakes, please watch this, is to be self-righteous in our own eyes, or worse still, be suffering from spiritual pride. You see, God can do so much with a prostitute, I tell people, but he cannot stand a proud person. Oh no. Why? Because it's the same sin of Satan. Satan became proud and God kicked him out. So if God has forgiven you something, he said, I forgive you child and you are still slapping yourself over it, you have been proud. Or you are thinking, I'm so self-righteous. I'm not supposed to do that. Mm -mm. Walking away because of a fall is not an option for a genuine believer because nowhere can be better than with Jesus. When people say, oh, that brother used to come to our church and he fell into sin of so and so and he's not come back to the church saying, since then, I always ask, are you sure he's really saved? Seriously. Because if that individual is truly saved, there's no way you want to be other than with Jesus. If you're his child, if you're his true uh, follower, you will always come back to the cross just like David. He went through so many things, but all he was after was God, God, God. As the deer pants beside the water, so my soul pants after you, O oh God. You see, that's how it is for a child of God. So if you call yourself a truly born again child of God, and you sin, and you walk away from Jesus because of that, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh, the Holy Spirit in you will not allow you that. So you may want to check yourself again because you have been built as a genuine believer, to bounce back. John Mark, he left in Pamphylia uh, and uh, halfway in the missionary tree, he said, I've had enough. And uh, Apostle Paul was disappointed because of that. But when he went back to Jerusalem, few chapters after that incident, what happened? John Mark was back on the mission field. Why? Because there's no way that was better for John Mark except to be on the mission field where Jesus has put him. You see, let's go to Proverbs 24, 16. Proverbs 24, 16. The godly, that is a genuine believer, may trip seven times, but they will get up again. You know why? Because you're not getting up in your own power. You see, you are getting up in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if somebody falls and they are not able to get back again, uh, maybe they've never been born again, really. Maybe they've only been doing religion, but that can change. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked, you see. You see, a truly 
Born again child of God, we always bounce back because you are expected to. You may fumble and stumble, but you are not to be crumbled. Come on now, Joseph and Zion. Let's say that again. If you don't want to go back to Jesus because you did something wrong, listen now. You may fumble and stumble, okay? But you are not to be crumbled. So get back into the game and continue fighting the good fight of faith. Let your comeback be a, 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 a revenge mission against the kingdom of hell in Jesus' name. So what have we done so far? What is expected of you as God's investment? You are expected to have reruns. God has not invested a one-off resource in you. So don't become complacent after being used by God one time. You are expected to bring fortunes. For every blessing of God in your life is to pass it forward and introduce others to Christ Jesus. You are expected to have losses. We do make mistakes. We do sin. However, we must repent and confess immediately to get back into fellowship with God. You are expected to have rebounds. We do not stop fighting the good fight of faith until we are called home to glory, either by death or by rapture. Amen. Now let's conclude. As a follower of Jesus, who is looking forward to the day we will be forever with the Lord, are you also thinking of when you will stand before the Lord for your works to be examined? Are you thinking about that? Huh? Can you point to one soul, just one soul, that have come to the Lord Jesus because of you or through you? Huh? If the answer is no, you have one of two options. Listen up. Now put on your sanders of the preparation of the gospel and let the light of Jesus begin to shine through you to other people by telling them Jesus is coming soon. Or you can sit on God's love which saved you, his kindness, we change your life around and continue to watch as people go to hell every day around you because they don't have Jesus. Now, those two options are what you have on the table. The Bible doesn't give us the third option as believers, so choose which one you think you are comfortable with as a child of God. Based on the option you choose, imagine what God will tell you at the judgment seat of Christ. If you are a believer, I will see you there, and you will see me, and we will remember this message, all right? Are you here to commit your life to Jesus and become his disciple? You have a choice. You can surrender your life to him now and let God begin to unveil his plan for you, which is to make you a blessing unto others. If you are ready, Click on the link that is coming. I will say a quick prayer. And that link will come up. Follow that link. And we will meet you there for further instructions. God bless you. Father, you have spoken to us. Lord, we pray that you will give us the grace. Burn this word into our heart. Make us uncomfortable, oh Lord. That to keep quiet will be impossible for us about Jesus Christ. Lord, for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, Father, let them meet you. Open their eyes and let your spirit, the sweet, blessed Holy Spirit, make the word understandable for them. In Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. I will see you next week if Jesus has not split the sky open.